Hello viewers, this Dao Too Fast here. Now the company Rexing have been making dash cams for many years. They specialize in making two channel dash cams with front and rear camera recording. In today's video, I'll be reviewing their 12 inch rear view mirror dash cam. This one here is a Rexing M1 Pro. It features a front camera that records in 2K 1440p and a rear camera that records in Full HD 1080p. This dash cam uses a Sony IMX335 image sensor for clear daytime and nighttime recording. It also has night vision recording and parking monitor recording. I'll go over everything from setup to installation in this video, so stay tuned. Let me show you the unboxing of this Rexing M1 Pro mirror dash cam. Here's a mirror dash cam. There's a user manual. There's a cigarette lighter power cable, plastic pry tool, mounting clips, USB cable, there's a rear camera and a rear camera cable. Here's a look at everything you get with this dash cam. So let's have a closer look at this Rexing M1 Pro Mirror dash cam. On the front is a 12 inch IPS LCD touchscreen. From the factory, there is a plastic film installed. You need to remove it after you install it so you get a clear view. Looking at the bottom, there's a power switch. Next to it is a microphone. Looking at the top, there's a mini USB for powering the dash cam. Next to it is AV input for the rear camera. And over here is a micro SD memory card slot. Now this dash cam supports up to 256 gigabyte memory size. And on the far right is a GPS port for plugging in the optional GPS antenna. Let's have a look at the back. On the left side is a speaker. Right here are the rubber straps you use to install this onto the existing rear view mirror. So to install this, what you want to do is place this in front of the factory mirror and then wrap these rubber straps over it and then clip it to the bottom clip here. Near the middle here is a reset switch and on the far right is the front camera. This front camera has a resolution of 2K 1440p. It uses a six glass fixed focus lens with a viewing angle of 170 degrees you can swivel this camera to adjust the angle. Here I'll install a micro SD memory card. Now it does not come with one, so you do have to provide your own. To power the dash cam, you'll need to connect this cigarette lighter power cable. Plug this connector into the mini USB connector. And then plug this into your 12 volt accessory port inside your vehicle. Next, connect the rear camera cable to this connector right here. On the other end of this cable, connect the rear camera. Now you'll notice there is a red wire coming out on this end. If you connect this to a backup light, when you put the car in reverse, the LCD display will switch to a backup view when you're backing up. Now keep in mind, you don't have to connect this red wire if you don't want to. You just won't have the lowered angle view when you're backing up. So let's power this on. Here it tells you the memory card needs to be formatted first. Let's go into settings. Go to format. Let's go back. Once the memory card is formatted, the recording will begin automatically. That's indicated by a flashing red dot right here. Looking at the display, at the top it will show you date and time. Over here it tells you the back camera is connected, microphone is on, and the internal battery is being charged. Now looking at the bottom, there's a microphone icon. If you want to mute the microphone, press it. Press it again to unmute. The next icon is a camera icon. If you press it, it will take a snapshot. In the middle is a record button. If you press it, it'll stop the recording. Press it again to start the recording. Next one over is a settings icon. I'll go into that more later. And on the far right is a lock icon. If you press it, it'll lock this video clip so it will not be overwritten. So let's say if you're driving along and you see something happening on the road, you can press that icon to lock that video clip. After this video clip is recorded and locked, the dash cam will resume back to regular recording. Now right now, the view you're looking at is from the back camera. If I swipe to the left, it'll switch to a side-by-side -side view. The front camera is on the left side, right here, and the back camera is on the right side, right here. If I swipe to the left again, now you're looking at the front camera, swipe again. Now we're back to the rear camera view. Let's go into the settings. The first item is loop recording. You can select one minute, three minutes, or five minutes. I'm going to set this for three minutes. Now the dash cam will record both the front and rear camera simultaneously, non-stop, while you're driving. With this set to three minutes, 
The dash cam will continuously record a bunch of 3 minute videos until the memory card is full and then it will start overwriting the oldest file. Next one, record audio. You can mute or unmute the microphone. G sensor. By default set to low, you can set it for off, low, middle or high. I'm going to set this for middle. Now with the G sensor, if you get into an accident, the dash cam will detect the impact and automatically lock that video clip so it will not be overwritten. Parking mode. By default it's off, you can set it for low, middle or high. Now the parking mode on this dash cam uses the internal rechargeable battery to power it while the ignition is off and the vehicle is parked. When it detects an impact to the vehicle, the dash cam will come out of standby and record a short 20 second video clip. After the recording, it will go back to standby mode. For now, I'm going to leave this off. License. Here you can assign a unique number for this dash cam, so if you're using these in a fleet of vehicles, the video will show a unique ID letting you know which vehicle it was recorded in. Screensaver. By default it's off, you can set it for 1 minute or 3 minutes. With the screensaver, you can have the LCD turn off while it's recording. I'm going to leave this off. Backlight adjustment, you can set it for auto or manual. Video encode, default is H.265, you can set it for H.264. Frequency, you can set it for 50Hz or 60Hz. USB mode, you use this when you're connecting it to a PC. Mirror image, if you turn it on, you'll flip the rear view image horizontally. Key voice, is a sound it makes when you're touching the buttons. You can turn this on or off. Speaker, you can set it for mute, low, middle, or high. Boot sound, you can turn this on or off. Stream media, if you turn it on, every time you start the vehicle, the LCD will default to a live view of the rear camera. Language, here you can select different languages. Daylight savings time, you can turn this on or off. Day and time, here you can set the day and time. Format, as you saw earlier, is the format the micro SD memory card. Default will set the unit back to factory default. Version is a version of software. When you're done, go back. So let's take this to the vehicle. I'll show you how to install it and we'll check out the image you get from the LCD mirror and also take a look at the daytime and nighttime recording. To install the mirror dash cam, place it in front of the factory mirror. Take the rubber strap and wrap it around the mirror and then hook it to the bottom hook. Do the same thing with the other strap. Plug in the power cable. Connect the rear camera cable. Run these two cables up to the headliner and over to the A pillar. Pull back the weather stripping. Let's run this rear camera cable up along the edge right here. Now you need to be careful and keep the cable away from the side curtain airbag. Run the power cable along the side down here. And take it over to the center console where you'll plug in your cigarette lighter plug. Remember to remove the screen protector. The rear camera is waterproof, so you can install this outside the vehicle. If you want to do this, you can install it somewhere above the license plate in the middle right here. Now installing it here will require more work because you will have to route this wire into the vehicle. The other option is to install this camera inside the vehicle behind the back window. To mount the camera, it comes with double-sided tape and screws. I'll install the camera right here. I ran the cable all the way to the back. Tuck the cable along the weather stripping right here. Connect the rear camera to the rear camera cable. Tuck any extra wires behind the headliner. Use a T-tap to connect the red wire to the positive wire of the backup lights. Start the car up. Once the dash cam power on, the recording will begin automatically and it is recording both the front and rear camera simultaneously. Right now you're looking at the rear camera view. If I swipe up and down on the left part of the screen, you can adjust the angle. With the red wire connected to the backup light, when I put the car in reverse, the LCD display will switch to a backup view showing the parking guidelines. Now you notice on the right side there's a zero here. If you tap this icon right here, you can change the viewing angle. So with this view, you're looking straight down behind the vehicle. When I put the car in park, it'll switch back to the regular view. Let me demonstrate to you how the parking mode work. Let's first go into settings. Parking mode. Here you can set how sensitive you want for the impact detection. I'll set this to high. Go back. Now turn off the ignition. The unit will power off and go into standby mode. 
At this time, if the dash cam detects an impact, it will power itself on and record a short 20 second video clip. After the recording, it will go back to standby mode. Now one benefit of having this type of LCD rear view mirror is if you have stuff in your back cargo and it's blocking your view out the back window, this LCD rear view mirror will still show you a clear view of the back. It's very helpful if you're backing out of a driveway or out of a parking space. Let me show you one more benefit of using this rear view mirror dash cam. If you look at the side mirror right here, you do not see a vehicle right next to me. That's because a vehicle is actually in my blind spot right here. But if you look at the mirror, here you can see the back half of this vehicle on the display. Because the back camera has a wide angle view, is able to show you more on this display. Now there is one thing to keep in mind. Because this is a wide angle view, the objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. Now during the day, on a bright sunny day, you might see a bit of glare on the mirror surface. What you can do is press a power button right here and turn off the LCD and use it as a regular mirror. And if you use it as a regular mirror, as you can see, the optics on this mirror is very good. To turn on the LCD, just tap the screen. As you saw in the video, this Rexing M1 Pro rear view mirror dash cam is a very good performer. With a daytime recording, it's able to capture a lot of details and you can see nearby road signs and license plates in front of you very clearly. With a nighttime recording, as long as there is some ambient light, it will be able to record a clear video of what's happening around you. As for the 12 inch LCD touchscreen display, I found the image quality to be very good. The amount of glare you get on a sunny day is not bad at all compared to other brands on the market. Installation is very simple. You have one wire for power and a second wire that goes to the back camera. At the time of doing this review, you can get this dash cam for $150. If you want to learn more about it, I'll include the link in the description below. Thank you for watching this video. To support this channel, remember to click on thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the notification bell so you get notified of new videos.